Hey everybody, I wanted to take a second and reply to the very first person that sent me an email the other day. And so I promised a video explaining um, what that question was. And so here is the video. Um, so today's question comes from Amy Collins in the child study team office. She's a social worker at the high school. Um, I think that she works district wide with all sorts of kids. Um, and she was the first to respond. So as promised, here's my video um, to address her question. Um, she wants to know if there's any way to flip counseling sessions. Um, and you can read her email. I guess over here, this was cut off a little bit, but it says, you know, managing emotions, accepting consequences. Okay, so she finds games or worksheets, um, strategies and role play activities. Okay, and so I will address this specific question, but I think I need to take time to um, address the bigger issue is how to use video processing and making videos or looking up videos to make your, uh, make your job easier whether you're a teacher or an administrator or a nurse or anything. This, this idea of flipping can work for any type of class, okay? Or any type of position that you're in, um, in, the, in the education field. So um, let me switch camera angles and talk specifically about what the heck you can do, okay? So let me first address the general broad question of what to do if you are not a teacher and you're not flipping lessons. The general goal of flipping, whether you're a teacher flipping content or an administrator trying to flip whatever job that you feel is um, necessary to flip, the whole point is all of you have, all of us, <laughs> and everybody who thinks they can't flip have one common goal. And that goal is to make your interactions with the people you're talking to, excuse me, more meaningful. And so in order to make them more meaningful, you want to make sure that you um, address the more simple things outside of your meeting time so that that way you can address the deeper uh, questions more easily or at their own at their own level. So if you're an administrator, um, the best example that I have is as an administrator, maybe you need to teach or you know show people how to run tests. We just had PSATs, okay? So maybe as an administrator, you need to train every staff member on how to run PSATs. Okay, we all know that people miss staff meetings and they go to, they go, they train, they go to uh, wherever they go, they have doctor's appointments, they, you know, for whatever reason. And so what that does is that puts an unneeded burden on you, the administrator, to train all those people individually because of a state requirement. Now, I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how PSATs work, but I know that the old HESPAs, everybody had to be trained. And so whether you're at the, at the meeting or not at the meeting, and then whoever was responsible for the training had to hunt down the 10 or 15 people that weren't there, and that's a pain in the neck. So I think what <laughs> the, the idea is, is if you record that training and make it so that teachers have to view it, as an administrator, you only have to say it once. You don't have to go around and find everybody and say it a million times. And then there's techniques that you can easily easily do this just once and have teachers um, view it. Imagine GCN, except you're creating the content or you're finding the content to display to the teachers. I think that that's the powerful thing. So instead of spending 20 minutes in a, depart or a department meeting or a, or a staff meeting about how to... Um, how to uh, proctor the PSATs or whatever, you can just ask teachers, hey, are there any questions? Do we have any meaningful questions about what's going on? And of course, that opens up the time. Instead of using 20 minutes to describe what you need to do, it opens the time for a little bit better discussion about where, the, where there may be um, questions. And I think that that's important. So if we look at Amy's question specifically, 
her question is, is there a way that I can flip uh, counseling sessions? Okay, and so I'm going to give a specific example of how I would flip a counseling session. And in the end, what we're doing is we're really just making the meaningful more one-on-one -on -one time more meaningful between her and the student, okay? And so I have to admit that I don't know if this works because I am not a counselor or social worker, but I can see the power that it has in my own classroom when I am flipping and making the time more meaningful for my students in my classroom. And so that's why I can imagine that it may work. So let me um, switch camera angles again and take a look at what, how I would specifically flip the counseling session. So the email is right here, but I'm gonna open up YouTube. Now I didn't make a specific video about a specific thing. Again, I don't wanna do the, the profession in injustice. So what I did is I went to YouTube and I searched anger management preteen game because uh, Mrs. Collins says that she does games with her kids to teach them emotional, um, emotional and uh, supportive techniques. So I'm looking out and I'm like, okay, well, what are some things that go on? So here's this person, but you know, if I have younger kids, I'm not sure if they're gonna look here. So I'm gonna look at this video right here, okay? And now you're gonna have to excuse me because I'm gonna, you can hear it, but oh, let me skip the ad. And so you can hear it, I'm actually turned down the thing. But here is a video that gives techniques on how to manage anger, okay? Now, again, I'm not a social worker, but this may set up, this is a video that could set up the counseling session. So instead of spending time explaining to whoever it is, a parent or a child, on what the expectation is of the counseling session, you can have them see the video and then you can have them write questions down. You could have them watch the video a hundred times so that they can get whatever the, the message of the video is down. Um, they can digest it. They could work with their parent or not with their parent. And so by, by looking at the video, what it does is it makes the one-on-one -on -one time more meaningful, okay? And so, and then again, you can also make this um, so that people would have to watch it. There's ways to do that, um, as opposed to, you know, like an email where you can just delete it, okay? And so then you, it, at the very least, you would know um, if they watched it or not. So you knew what you were getting yourself into when you were, um, when you were, uh, before the counseling session began. And so this speaks to, and I'll let this play, but this speaks to the bigger thing. As somebody who is n not necessarily an educator or somebody who is not a teacher in the classroom, we're all educators, you want to figure out ways to make your interactions with everybody more meaningful and make the lower order stuff something that is more um, digestible f to the audience. Okay, so if you're an administrator, take the things that you commonly say to your staff and make a video and have staff watch it. That way you don't ever have to address it again. Okay. The, the tip that I got as a flipper when I f went to my conference is that you should take the things that you say the most, no matter who you are, okay, and push those out of the classroom. Because if you're saying it the most, it's the thing that people need the most reinforcement on. And then you can get to the core of something more valuable. And I think that that's really what you're trying to do. So imagine um, flipping parent contact, something that I did. What I did is I created a video to tell my parents, of the students in my classroom, not my own parents, okay, how they can interact with Genesis. And then I said, if you have questions, email me them. That way they are all on the same page, they know how to do it, and the only questions I'm getting are meaningful questions about grades, okay? I'm not forcing this, the parents to watch the video, but I could, I could set it up and I say, oh, make sure you watch the video. Anyways, 
um, the point is, is that flipping is not just a technique for in the classroom. Anybody that is involved in education, from the superintendent down to a secretary, um, well, maybe we should go <laughs> from a secretary down to the superintendent, <laughs> uh, can flip part of their job. It just makes the interactions more meaningful when you need them. So if you have any other questions, feel free to email me and I will get back to you about how to flip kind of the non-traditional um, roles that we have in education. Okay, have a great day.